It appears that I use this relationship between the contravariant and covariant bases in one of my lectures without actually justifying it. Or it's possible that I justified it in one of the earlier lectures, but why I would have to watch several lectures to find the spot. And in any case, I'm very happy to talk about this very important relationship in a video dedicated entirely to it. And of course, later on, when we introduce index juggling, this relationship may appear simply as a special case of index juggling. But logically, it's the other way around. Index juggling could not have been introduced without this relationship or the equivalent relationship between the metric tensors. So let's now talk about this relationship, derive it, and we will see that the relationship between the metric tensors is key. And then later on, when index juggling comes around, you'll know what's going on. So of course, the key, once again, is the relationship between the covariant and contravariant metric tensors. And that relationship, that inverse matrix relationship, is the definition of the contravariant metric tensor. The contravariant metric tensor is defined as the matrix inverse of the covariant metric tensor. That's the definition. And the definition of the contravariant basis element is, of course, a contraction between the covariant basis element and the contravariant metric tensor. And that will prove this relationship. So let's see how that happens. So, of course, Zi can be written as Zk multiplied by the contravariant metric tensor. In other words, I, I, K. So this, by the very definition, is Zi. And now we're dotting it with Zj. And this is, by its very definition, the covariant metric tensor. So we have Z, I, K, Z, K, J. Because Z, K, J is the dot product of Z, K and Z, J. And now, by the definition of the contravariant metric tensor, this is the quote-unquote identity matrix, or in the language of tensors, the chronica delta I, J. So you see, there is nothing mysterious or affine or orthogonal about this relationship, even though it's orthogonal looking. I'll talk about that in a second. All it is is the definition of the contravariant basis element and the definition of the contravariant metric tensor. So all this really is is something that's equivalent to these two definitions. So not mysterious at all. What's very neat about this relationship is that it kind of implies orthogonality. In fact, not kind of, it does imply orthogonality. It says that each one of the contravariant basis elements is in fact orthogonal to the covariant basis element as long as they have different numbers. If they have the same numbers, then their inner product is one. Otherwise, the inner product is zero. So when we try to draw them, of course, it will not be orthogonal in any way. Should we do it in two dimensions or three dimensions? Let's stick to two dimensions. So if this is our covariant basis, Z1, Z2, then Z1 prime, Z1 prime, what am I saying? Z, the contravariant Z1, the contravariant Z1 will be orthogonal to Z2 and its dot product with Z1, with this Z1, will be 1. So it will look, let me make it orthogonal to Z2, it will look like something like this. And Z2 will be orthogonal to this Z1, to the covariant Z1. And its dot product with Z2 will be 1. So it will look like something like this. You see how I'm not going in the opposite direction? The angle needs to be between 0 and pi over 2. So that we have plus 1. Otherwise, we might end up with minus 1. So it's actually, once you have the covariant basis, you can pretty much draw the contravariant basis and vice versa. 
All right, so this might be Z1, orthogonal to Z2, and this might be Z2, contravariant, orthogonal to Z1. So this is a right angle right here, and this is a right angle right here. All right, is there something else I can add to this? Well, the only thing that I can add is that if, Z, if the length of Z1 is less than 1, then the length of Z1 contravariant is greater than 1. Why? Because their dot product equals 1. So the product of their lengths must be greater or equal to 1. So that's just one additional note. So there you go. In any case, this relationship is very difficult, is very easy to derive, and it does say something about orthogonality between the elements of the covariant basis and the elements of the contravariant basis. I hope this was helpful.